Just lift your hand to heaven and just begin to bless him, the unlimited God. Just bless his name and give him praise. Every moment of worship, he deserves it. Every hour of worship, he deserves it. If all we came to do today, the first Tuesday service in the month of April, just to bless his name, he deserves it. The unlimited God, the all-sufficient God, the almighty God, the all-powerful God, we worship you, we adore you. We are here again to, to drink of your river, to be fed by you. Breathe upon us in a unique way today. Let no one at the sound of my voice remain the same after this service. Let a new passion, a new zeal begin to burn in our heart for you, Lord, like never before. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. Let's put our hands together. Thank you very much, choir, for that wonderful time of worship. Celebrate them, celebrate them, celebrate them. Glory, glory, glory to God. And I want you to greet someone close to you and tell the person, welcome to the month of April. Hallelujah. I said, look at someone else and tell the person, say, welcome to your month of, of miracles. And if no, if no one is turning to you, turn to yourself. I welcome myself to my month of joy, my month of lifting, my month of blessing. In the name of Jesus, celebrate yourself. Sometimes it's good to celebrate yourself. If, if no one celebrates you, celebrate yourself. <laughs> Glory to God. The theme for this month of April is fire. Let someone shout fire. fire. When, the, when the Lord gave that theme, I was wondering, fire. It only occurred to me a few days back that we had just finished Easter. And that was resurrection. Hallelujah. And Jesus told the disciples, that after this resurrection, go keep yourself in a place called the, the upper room. Something is coming. So I discovered that after Easter was fire. The Bible says, whilst they were there, there was a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. And upon every one of them, every one of them dropped cloven tongues. As of what? As of fire. I believe this month, something will drop for you. I said, something will drop for you. Amen. When it dropped on them, things they never said before, they begin to say. People that never heard them, heard them for the first time. The people they could not stand in front, God gave them wisdom and gave them ability to speak to a congregation that they, they never could believe they could stand in front. The same Peter that was hiding before, he stood before 3,000. God, this month, will take you to a place of greatness. Amen. I'm saying that God will use this month to launch someone out. See, before then, all the three and a half years they were with Jesus, they were doing what? They were doing preparation. When the fire came, he launched them to fulfill their destiny. All that they've been preparing, all this while, they didn't know why. They just following Jesus, teaching them this. But the purpose, after fire came, they began to manifest it. You might be wondering, oh, why, why did I give my life to Christ? Oh, why am I coming to church every time? Oh, what is this Bible, Bible, Bible? The purpose of God for your life will be revealed this season. Amen. And it will be clear to everyone that sees you and that knows you that indeed God separated you. Amen. That God chose you. Amen. And that you're for signs and for wonders. Amen. Let someone shout a big hallelujah for that. Hallelujah. So for 
for all of us that are here on two service, I call us uh, a special group. Amen? So it means that we're the ones that will enjoy the build-up before, before others join. For the Sunday Sunday medicine people who we'll enjoy the build-up. Let's start from Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 1, from the very beginning. Very beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, I read from verse 1 to 3. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. In this Genesis 1, verse 1 to 3, we saw the appearance of God the Father. God the Father was there. We saw the Spirit of God as the Spirit that hovered upon the waters. Then we saw God the Son. The Trinity appeared here at once. God the Son appeared as the light. Hallelujah. So he, in Genesis 1, verse 1 to 3, we saw the appearance of God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. John 1, verse 2. John chapter 1, verse 2 says, The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light is the picture of Jesus. Hallelujah. The son of the living God. Let there be light. That was the appearance of Christ. And when he said, let the, the spirit hover, that's the appearance of the Holy Spirit. Verse 5 says, and the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. That was why the light conquered darkness. Because Jesus must conquer. Amen. Light wins every situation. Jesus must win. So no matter what is going on in your life, because you have Jesus, you must win. No matter the opposition coming against you, wind blowing anywhere, because you have Jesus, you must conquer. Because the light conquers. He said, it shines in darkness. Darkness could not comprehend it. Darkness is the total embodiment of evil. So anything you, are, you know about evil is packed together and called darkness. Witches and wizards, occultic men, sorcerers, diviners, occultic, whatever they are called, they are all packed together in one, in one word, darkness. And he says, in their fullness of their strength, they cannot withstand light. They can't withstand who? Light. And Jesus also says to you, and says to say, ye are the light of the world. Which means, no power can stand you. No challenge you are going through that you have no power to overcome. Anything standing before you, you overcome them. I say, any challenge you are going through now, make giving sleepless nights, why did it come? It came because you have the ability to overcome it. When you look at Steve, oh, this pressure is too much. I don't know what's going on. Da, 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 da. Why am I going through this? The only reason why that situation is in your life is because there's an ability God has given to you to reign over it. Say, I'm more than conquerors. Say it one more time. Say, I'm more than conquerors. I'm an overcomer. And shout earlier for that. So today we're speaking about the nature of God. The nature of God. I've told you that this morning our theme is fire. But I want to build us up before we get there. They will focus on fire. One of the things that the Spirit of God does for us, it, it brings, it manifests the nature of God. Sometimes you, you can call it the attributes of God. The nature of God are the things that make God, God. So the Spirit of God has the ability in our lives to showcase God. One of the attributes of God is called wisdom. Shout wisdom. Shout it one more time. Shout, shout it louder than that. God 
is a God of wisdom and a God of revelation. In Ephesians 1, 17, Ephesians 1, 17, the Bible says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of what? Wisdom. And what? And revelation in the knowledge of him. When God wants to manifest himself to you, he can, he can manifest as wisdom. That's why there is no situation that has no answer when you're connected to God. There's no circumstance that is too complex that God cannot solve. All you need is the spirit of wisdom. And here he says, I will give to you. Glory to God. God can give to you. You can demand from God. I've been making mistakes, too many mistakes. Lord, give me some wisdom. Wisdom is the right application of knowledge. When you are able to do the right thing at the right time. And you are able to profile the right thing that will solve the issue. No error. Spirit, spirit of revelation is when God suddenly unveils the secret, unveils things that are hidden, and you, you just know it. How do you know it? I just know it. How do you know it? I, I just know. Why? Mysteries have been unveiled to you. I'm believing God that God will release in someone's life the spirit of wisdom. Yeah. That from today, men that knew you will suddenly discover there's something different about this guy. Something different about this lady. Whatever she says, mark it. At the end, you meet it there. Say wisdom. Yeah. When you go back to your office and you're doing a meeting, and you say, well, I think we should do this. We should go this direction. If everyone goes the other way, they're still coming back to meet you back. Because you will know why you are saying it, or what is what is why or what is making you say it. It's God. It's called the spirit of what of wisdom. It's an attribute of God. It's a display of God's nature. So the nature of God is wisdom and revelation. Another one that is a nature of God, an attribute of God. Unveiled to us, made available to us also through the Spirit of God is truth. Say truth. First John 4 6. First John 4 6. It says, We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we. The spirit of what? Of truth. And the spirit of error. There's a spirit of truth. It's a spirit of God. It's a nature of God. When you are able to discern between falsehood and truth, you're able to stand before someone and he's speaking to you, and you know this one is 4 and 9. And a bell is ringing like, Lie, lie, lie. Are you with me? It looks so, it looks so convincing to everyone. But something in you is not agreeing with it. It's called spirit of truth. Hallelujah. Deep, quite unto deep. When a lying spirit comes, truth will repel against it. When they come to deceive you, the spirit of truth will unveil it. When you, are, when you have received the spirit of truth inside of you, even when you want to lie, you will choke. Other people can be, other people can be easy to lie. They can look at you and say, some people say, eh, the truth is in, is in the eye. They open their eye like this and look at you, eye to eye. And they are lying to you. <laughs> Full lie. With, but their eyes wide open. 
But for you, when you are a carrier of the spirit of truth, you will struggle to lie because it's not in you. The spirit of error is not there. The, what is inside of you is what? The spirit of what? Of truth. Very soon, everyone around you will know. If you want to know the truth, talk to her. I pray for someone. Anything called lying spirits, they vanish from your life from today. I've heard some, I've heard some people say, how can I not lie? It's like nature. Whatever makes it easy to you to lie, from today, they are gone. In you lies the spirit of what truth. It's a spirit. It's what? The spirit. It says here, hereby know we the spirit of truth. Is, is an attribute of God. Bible says, let every man be a liar, but God be what? Our God can never lie. He can what? Never lie. It's an attribute of God. If he says it, he will bring it to pass. He will stand by his word. Therefore, every promise of God for your life will come to pass. And every voice of men against your life, they become liars. Another attribute of God in scriptures is life, short life. Say it one more time. Revelations 11, 11. See, we are building up, we are building up, we are building up the nature of God. As you know that these are the things that make God, God. You begin to desire them. They begin to, you begin to seek those things to manifest in your life. Revelation 11, 11 says, And after three days and a half, the spirit of what? Life. Shall the spirit of what? Life. The spirit of what? Life. From God entered into them. And they stood up upon their feet. And great fear fell upon them. We saw them. There's a spirit of life that comes from God. That is why you can be bold to say anything that has died must come back to life. Because there's a spirit of life. It says when that spirit came in them, they rose up. Everything that is down in your life will jump up. Everything that stopped to walk in your life will start to walk. Yeah. Everything that has been said has been said not working. Not working. From today they begin to walk. Yeah. Bible says when they rose up, people saw. And they said, What? These are the people we've given up hope of. When I never knew that anything can come out of this life again. I written this one off. How did he turn? How did he... Shout the spirit of life. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. As long as you are a carrier of the life of God, no one can end your story. No one. No situation can, can answer end. You will rise again. I said you will rise again. Even if you sleep and fall, you will rise again. Amen. Bible says, even if a tree is cut down, as long as a scent of water drops upon it, it says, it shall yet bud again. I don't care how, how, how much you, how big or how great is your fall. I don't care how long it looks like if it's, nothing is happening. From tonight, things begin to happen around you. Your leaves will begin to grow out. You begin to board. Your life will become fruitful. In the name of Jesus. Say, I receive life. Say, I receive life. They come from the nature of God. 
everything that is a nature of God belongs to you. Everything that is an attribute of God is ordained to manifest in your life. They belong to you and I because we are, we are carriers of God. So I carry life. See, I carry life. See, I carry life. I carry life. I cannot die because I have life. I cannot die because I have life. I cannot diminish because I have life. I have life. Everything around me must live. Your career must live. Your homes, your business, they must live. Whatever you lay your hand upon, it must prosper. It must increase. It must grow. Why? You are a carrier of life. Everywhere you go, even if it wasn't working for when you get there, it starts to work. Why? You are a carrier of life. Say, I carry life. Say, I carry life. Another one, the fourth one, we spoke about the spirit of wisdom and revelation as a nature of of God. We spoke about truth as the, the nature of God. So we spoke about life. The fourth one we speak about is power. Shout power. power. She says it one more time. Power. Luke 4 14. Luke 4 14. The Bible says, And Jesus returned in the spirit of what? Power. The spirit of God manifest the natures of God. The spirit of life. The spirit of truth. The spirit of revelation. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of power. Short power. power. And, say, and there went out a fame of him through all the region around about. When the spirit of power comes upon you, Impossibility becomes possible in your life. Things that you could not do before, you begin to do with ease. Challenges that you could not face before, they crumble before you. All you need is power. Oppositions, they submit to power. Enemies, they bow to power. Darkness bow to power. I pray for someone today, you be a carrier of that power. Yes, so you be a carrier of that power. Yes, you be a carrier of that power. Yes, I say you be a carrier of that power. Yes, Let me tell you a story. It happened many years back. As a young Christian then, when, when I heard that story, that story, it set me on fire. That time, this is, this is a, a, a public transport in Lagos. They call it Molue. I remember I've heard Molue before. Some might not have seen it before. Uh, 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 so but few people, few people still know Molue. Molue is, a, is a, a moving vehicle, big moving vehicle. When it's full, as it's running, you jog, jog, jog. Then so the professionals, they jog, uh, they'll they, they hang on it. When it's about to get to your stop, as it's slowing down, you see they, they jump out and they jog. It's called what? Mulwe. So there's a young guy, a young Christian brother. He went for night vigil. And in the early morning, he was going home from the vigil. So he entered the Mulwe bus and sat down. And I, you know, as I, as I was describing, because of no do have a, a vehicle, so people rushing to enter Mule. It can be like six, five people rushing at the same time, you know, so that they can get a seat. So the, the Mule stopped at the particular place, and people were trying to rush in to jump in, early money rush. And one guy, one young guy, as I was jumping in, he stepped on the feet of one older man. He stepped on his feet and didn't know. And um, the older man got very angry and called on that boy. Because he was speaking Yoruba, so I'll be saying in English. Like, hey, oh, you, hey, you boy, can't you see me? So the boy, the guy turned and said, ah, say, what, what happened? 
You step on my feet. So the guy said, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. And the man did not say, come here. I said, you step on my feet. He said, I'm, I'm sorry now. He said, ah, is that you beg me? He said, do, uh, do you want me to teach you a lesson? So the guy was still looking like, like, you know. So everybody was there, everybody was watching. The man said to the boy, remove your shirt. In the eyes of everybody in the bus, the guy opened his shirt to it. Remove your trouser. In the eyes of everybody, the guy opened his, bed, his uh, bro, trouser. He said, yeah, he said look, look at the door now. The guy turned. As he, he went there, as from now, run. As he was about to, the young boy that was coming for video, say, hey, Baba, hey, Baba, Baba, stop, 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 stop. This boy, I've been begging you since. We are here. He begged you, begged everybody, say, Baba, 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 Baba. You made the side of the movie, they're begging the man. Hey, Baba, Baba, the man did not hear. Said they were begging you, you didn't agree. Say so, Baba, now. Baba, remove your shirt. <laughs> Baba, remove shirt. Baba, remove trouser. Baba, remove trouser. Baba, begin to run. Baba jumped out and he had gone mad. On that day, power met what? Power. I said, power met what? And the weaker power did what? Bow. When I heard that story, my head went boom. That's how a Christian should live. We are more than conquerors. We are the owner of the original power. Don't be afraid of them. Greater is he that is in you than the one that is in the world. And the greater one in you is to put you over all obstacles in life. The world is waiting to see the power of the God you carry. Can someone shout a big hallelujah? hallelujah? When we heard that, we, went, we were excited. That yes, we carry power. Say power. power. The one inside of you is a strong and mighty God. He's not a weak God. The one inside of you, he can do all things. All power bow before him. He's the king of all the kings. He's the lord of all the lords. He reigns and rules over the affairs of men. When he says yes, no one can say no. Shout power. power. If you have God, you have power. Say, I have power. I have power. Say, I have power. I have power. Say, I say, I have power. It's not pride, it's your identity. Say, I carry power. I carry power. Whenever you are praying, whenever you are speaking, be conscious that I carry power. When you are decreeing a thing, don't just take it like I'm not talking. I am speaking power. And always know that whatever you say will come to pass. That's why it's good for you to bless yourself with your word. Don't join them that will say stupid things about themselves. Because you, you carry what? Power. So shout, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say one more time, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. See, there's a difference between you saying, I'm blessed to make me feel good and blessed just to say blessed. And I think to understand that by saying it, good things follow me. Are you with me? By decreeing it, things begin to work for me. Because power has been released upon my life. So now say it. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Throughout this month, Throughout blessings will follow me. Blessing will catch up with me. Blessing will overtake me. In the name of Jesus, shall I receive it? You said it with power. And it will come to pass. Another attribute of God is grace. Shall grace. Say it one more time. It's not everything you have to labor for. It's not everything you have to struggle for. See, I carry grace. Grace is the nature of God. See, some people, they'll be angry at you for that. 
they will jealous you. But it's not your fault. You just carry grace. Say, I carry grace. grace. Zechariah 12.10. Zechariah 12.10. It says, and I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of what? Grace. God can pour upon you a spirit called grace. When others are, are going to struggle, struggle, you're only just going easy. Are you with me? It's called the spirit of what? Grace. The grace of God. The grace of God. The grace of God. And I will pour upon the house of David. You can put your name there. And I will pour upon the house of his Paris. And upon the inhabitants of, this, of the new house. Hallelujah. The spirit of grace and supplication. Hallelujah. The next one I'll speak about is humility. Amen. Say humility. It's the nature of God. There's no pride in God. Humility. Isaiah 57 verse 15. Isaiah 57 verse 15. For thus said the Lord, the high and the lofty one that inhabits eternity. Can you see? Can you just see the, the, the definition of and description of God? For thus said the high and lofty, the one that inhabits eternity, that alone is enough to brag at those. Amen? It says, says, whose name is what? Holy. Say, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of contrite and humble spirit. As high as he is, as holy as he is, yet in him is holiness. Yet in him is humility. The nature of God is to be humble. Anywhere you see a man asking you, do you know who I am? Run from him. Anytime you see a man telling you, don't you know my position? Run from him. Anywhere you see a man and a woman. Because <laughs> I see the way say, hey, tell them, tell them. And a woman. <laughs> Making noise of the achievements. I've done this, I've done that. You know why? You know, I went to add to one. <laughs> the pride. Be humble. The high and the lofty one. The one that sits in, in heaven, that dwells in eternity, is still humble. Say, I receive the spirit of humility. Whenever that thing wants to grab you, when it wants to grab you, say to yourself, I receive the spirit of humility. Say to someone, say, I receive the spirit of humility. Oh, I, I receive the spirit of humility. When you have that spirit of humility, you look down the next person. Hmm. I don't, I don't touch it, but let me touch it more. Touch it more. Hmm. Hmm. If he's not driving a car, I can't talk to you. I'm not your mate. Say, be humble. Say, 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 be humble. Sometimes good things can come to you in small packages. But pride will make you miss it. Say to yourself, say, be humble. Say to yourself one more time, say, be humble. Some, some people will even go to some offices. Oh, I'm a contractor, I'm this one, I'm that one, I'm that one. The person that will help them, they'll pass the person by the door. They won't greet the person. The person say, Welcome, sir. Where's your boss? <laughs> the, the person that will sign the thing is the person you yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. Say, be humble. be humble. Even if it's not the, uh, the MGM, as long as the one that will carry the file, they will never see your file. 
Ah, wait there, wait there. Is it not someone that will carry the file to him? Is it not so? Uh -huh. If they carry it, I didn't, it didn't get there. Let's look for who find it. Just be what? Humble. See, oh, humble people. You will see them. This person is older than you. You say, you say, ah, sir to you. And you will say, no, no, sir. You used to say, sir. Say, no, say, sir. Say, sir. Say, ma. Say, no, but sir. Uh -huh. That one is the humble man. He's, he's, he's using wisdom. Are you with me? Uh -huh. So be humble. The spirit of humility is the nature of God. Pride is not of God. I dwell in the high and lofty place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. Another attribute of God and nature of God is meekness. Shout meekness. Say it one more time. Meekness. 1 Corinthians 4.21. 1 Corinthians 4.21 says, What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness? Meekness. When you have the power to do a thing and you let it go, say meekness. They have served to you. You know, they, they've, been, they've been chancing, but this is they've served to you. Now it is your power to show them. Ah! And you let them go. Say meekness. And say, let me just, let me just let it go. God loves meek people. People that because when he sees it in you, he, he, you remind him of himself. The eighth one I'll talk about, I just mentioned it, is the spirit of fire. Shout, shout fire. fire. One more time. Fire. One more time. Fire. Exodus 3, verse 2. Exodus 3, verse 2. It says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush and he looked and behold the bush burned with fire and the fire was not consumed manifestation of god in the dimension of fire fire is the manifestation of god's glory of his presence when the fire of God begins to burn, it's a sign that God wants to do something big. I pray for someone like this month, you will encounter the God of fire. Amen. When the Israelites were going on a journey in the wilderness, and in the nighttime, which meant they could not see their enemies, they could not see ambushes, they could not see the enemy coming from anywhere, they could not, there was no way they could have prepared for evil. But as long as there was a cloud of fire around them, the enemy saw the fire and they ran away. Fire is the divine protection of God around the man. When enemies see you and the enemies step back, this month, someone will be cleared with fire. The last one is holiness. Say holiness. Psalm 22, verse 3. Psalm 22, verse 3. It says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabit the praise of Israel. Our God is a holy God. Isaiah 6, verse 3. Isaiah 6, verse 3 says, And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Holiness is the nature of God. Our God is holy. Our God is what? Holy. When God opened the eyes of Isaiah to see the image of God, 
Holy saw angels. They were just saying, holy, holy, holy. Holiness is a attribute of God we need to pursue. We need to hunger for. We need to press toward. If you love everything about God, about Christianity, and you despise holiness, you will not make it to heaven. Holiness is who God is. I always give all these nine attributes of God for you to understand that there are diverse nature and manifestations of God. And in, at different times in scriptures, he manifests a dimension of himself to people in unique ways. When he manifested himself to a man called Samson, he manifested his power. It was a spirit of power that birthed the encounter with Samson. When he manifested himself to David also, it was a manifestation of a spirit of power. But when he came to manifest himself to Elijah, it was a spirit of fire. When he manifested himself to Moses, it was a spirit of what? Of fire. And if you follow every one of them, you discover that the manifestation of God to them was critical to their fulfilling of destiny. We know Elijah, the man that called down fire, fire came down. The same fire that he called that came down was the same fire that came down to take him to heaven. Are you with me? Bible talk about the chariot of fire. Elijah suddenly dropped his mantle and was taken up to heaven. Even in the book of Revelation, I'm not going to go deep, deep there now. These two men, Moses and Elijah, are still going to manifest the same fire again. From this, the Revelations, the book of Revelations. Every manifestation of God in your life is critical to your journey of destiny. So when you are calling on a dimension of the nature of God to show up in your life, that dimension is what carries you to fulfill destiny. And I know that there are some people here that the fire of God is about to encounter you. Because fire brings speed to lives. Fire glorifies God in a life. Fire changes lives. Everything that encounters fire never remains the same. Anything that encounters fire. Even a stone can melt to powder under fire. Wood turns to charcoal under fire. Cotton will disappear under fire. If something solid meets fire, it turns to liquid. If you throw liquid inside fire, it turns to gas. It will change the nature of a thing. This season, God is about to bring someone to one dimension to another. It looks like things are just the same. After this month, you begin to see significant changes. No one can touch fire. Even a madman in his madness still run from fire. You may not understand anything, but you understand fire. Get ready this month. You're about to experience speed. You're about to win battles. 
You are about to enjoy acceleration. Fire produces light. It brings visibility. So if you have been hidden before, they'll begin to see you. Hey, they'll begin to see you. Hey, they'll begin to see you. Fire is a way maker. When people are lost in the wood, all they look for is fire. Fire brings forth vision. When things look blur and you can't see the way, when fire comes up, what you didn't see before, you begin to see it. Someone here today, things will suddenly become clearer to you. Opportunities you were missing before that you could not see. After this encounter, your eyes will open. You have clear vision, clear sight in the name of Jesus. Shot fire. Say it one more time. Someone today, you're about to encounter the fire that will transform your life completely. You're about to be lifted up. You're about to mount up with wings like eagles. You're about to be a city on the hill. You're about to shine so bright that you cannot be hidden anymore. When the Bible says say, say you are the light of the world, he used candle, for example. Because candle can burn fire. Say, it, you cannot hide a candle under the table. Say, a candle is put on top for the whole world to see. Your gifts, your talents, your abilities, your potentials that no one has seen before from today, they become visible to the world. Amen. What will make you to shine in life? What will make you relevant? What will make men look for you from today? They begin to manifest in your life. Amen. They begin to manifest in your life. Amen. They begin to manifest in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Fire comes by an encounter with God. Moses had an encounter with God. One moment of encounter with fire. He broke 40 years of wilderness. One encounter with fire. He, he got clear direction and clear purpose. I want you to close your eyes and speak to the Lord. This month. April, the second, second quarter of the year, give me clear direction. Open my eyes. Give me clarity. Give me clear vision. Give me compelling vision. Show me what to do. Show me where to go. This month, Guide me by your light. Let your light lead me. Everything that has been blocking my sight before now, let your fire remove them completely. Everything that has been on my way as a stumbling block, let your fire chase them away. Let this month be a month like I've never seen before. Let this month be a month of marvelous help for me. Let this month be a month of power, a month of progress, a month of advancement, a month of your, of your favor. Thank you, Lord. As we're praying, if you're here, and you know you're connected to Jesus Christ, today is your day. Today is your day. Today is your day. Jesus is here, he's knocking at the door of your heart. And he's saying to you, open your heart, let me come in as fire. Let me come in and burn in your heart. Let me come in and, and cause you to hunger for me. Let me come in and transform your life completely. 
So if you are here, you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. You want to say bye-bye to sin. You want to begin to manifest the nature and the attributes of God. You want to begin to walk in wisdom and, and revelation. You want to begin to walk in the spirit of truth. You want to begin to enjoy life in abundance. You want to begin to enjoy power. You want to begin to walk on that grace. You want to walk with humility and meekness. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come and be my Lord and my Savior. If you are here, if you, if you pray that prayer, if you put your hand on your, on your chest. If you are at home and you want to pray that prayer, you're online, you put your hand on your chest. Say, this heart of mine, I open it. Be open. Be open. Lord Jesus, I invite you. Fill this heart with your love, with your grace, with your mercy in the name of Jesus. Save me. Change me. From today, I will follow you. I will serve you. I will live for you in Jesus' name. And church say big amen. You pray that prayer. If you are online, pray that prayer. I want to be praying for you and praying with you that this great decision you've made today will be permanent in the name of Jesus. I want you to send me a message on the email address or the on the WhatsApp number on the screen as I can pray with you.